One question I get asked all the time is, is the WWE Network worth it? It's only $9.99. It's something that you could mow a lawn for, pay for now that they sell cards at the store. You could do an odd job. Heck, you could sign up to Fiverr, do two jobs, and you could get the WWE Network every single month. But I made a case last year, and you know I was a little bit of, I don't want to say a hypocrite, because I never, in fact, said anything about it. But since Roman Reigns last year won, I said that once that happened, there was supposed to be this huge outcry of mass unsubscriptions from the network after Elimination Chamber when Roman Reigns beat Daniel Bryan. And I unsubscribed. And then I think ultimately I signed up for a one-month trial because I had never gotten it up to that point because I paid full price from the beginning. And then I started sharing an account for a year. And when they announced that they were sharing or changing the account sharing procedures, I ultimately uh, didn't have to. I mean, it was still working on the, the pay-per-views. They weren't actually limiting like they said they were. But I got to the point where I finally said, okay, I'm going to buy it. And, you know, I'm glad that I, I actually have bought it. I mean, there's no different than when you're watching on somebody else's if you're not watching live at the same time. So I felt like I was, you know, kind of robbing the cradle a little bit. Because I was really starting to like what the WWE Network was producing. Because even when Raw and SmackDown isn't good on TV, the WWE Network is actually very, very entertaining. And a lot of the stuff that they produce, especially the documentary-esque stuff, is fantastic. I honestly, truly love watching Breaking Ground and the WWE Network 24 series more than I do watching WWE sometimes. And that's kind of sad. That shouldn't be the case for a company. Your shows about your wrestling shouldn't be better than the actual wrestling itself. Now, WWE does produce a lot of quality wrestling uh, when it comes to like NXT or their Fatal 4 match at last month's pay-per-view or you know the main events. They, they do put on good matches. But when you have filler television every single week, it gets hard. So I get asked all the time, Tubby, is the WWE Network worth it? And, and I've always said yes from the very beginning because once the WWE Network got announced, I bought it instantly because from 2012 on, I bought every single pay-per-view. It was either 2011 or 2012. It's when my YouTube was starting to take off, so every single month I was ordering the pay-per-view on television and having to pay the cable bill, $44.99 extra. Uh, and then when I went to Comcast, it was like fifty four ninety nine with HD, and uh, Charter was free HD. So I immediately bought the network just for that purpose. I was already buying every single pay-per-view, uh, um, even the bad ones. I mean, come on. Even when you knew CM Punk was going to win, I was still buying those pay-per-views, or maybe that was before that. And I remember, you know, once they announced the network, and I went, okay, good. I'm saving 40 bucks a month. I'm easily going to sign up. And at the time, the big draw was old shows. And I've said this time and time again. I don't really have an interest in going back to watch how stuff used to be. Because that's not how stuff is done today. And I don't want to get my hopes up. Now, I'll still occasionally watch an Attitude Era Raw or SmackDown or, you know, watch an old WCW pay-per-view just to, you know, get in some uh, good laughs or watch a good match or two. But for the most part, I watch the WWE Network for their new shows that they're producing. Stuff like Camp WWE, the, the network specials, the documentaries, uh, Swerve Season 2, which Sw Sw Swerve Season 2 is actually very good um, so far. I'm really loving it. The fact that they are going after more fans and more you know broad-based uh, than just the WWE Network uh, being or they're pranking each other. So I, I think it's a little weird when people are like, yo, you're on Swerved, and they're like, what's the WWE Network? I thought wrestling's fake. Um, so some of the pranks are actually kind of a hoot. I think I'm on episode number five right now based on where I'm at. So the fact that they put up all of season one, I was so happy for. Um, it, it allows you to go through and binge watch what you enjoy instead of having to wait because the one thing that's frustrating with the network is they just kind of randomly debut shows. Like, we're still waiting on seasons and everything. Uh, I was a little disappointed that William Shatner didn't voice over the Breaking Bad Reloaded. Uh, I was a little bummed they went to their other guy. But um, I was looking at all these shows, and I'm wondering, okay, 
I love these shows more than WWE, so would it be worth it just to watch the network instead? And because of the fact that the Raws and the SmackDown are on such a delay, I don't think you could. Um, because of the licensing rights with USA for Raw and SmackDown, the networks, I think they're, what, six weeks delayed, a month delayed of shows, which sucks, and we don't even get main event anymore. You have to watch that, I think, over on Hulu or wherever they actually have it because of the U.K., so that'll be interesting as well because it's something that I have not watched. Um, personally, I think the WWE Network is 100% worth it. Like I said, the documentaries are fantastic. And one of my favorite things that I do enjoy watching, like I said, going back to some of the old pay-per-view matches, when you, uh, I, I started to go through a huge WWE DVD collection because Amazon had WWE DVDs for $5 if you had Amazon Prime and it was free shipping. So I went through and bought like probably 20 pay-per-view DVDs that now I'm just like, why do I have these? And when we moved to the apartment, I said, I really have no use to take any of these or it wasn't a priority to bring them because of the fact that the WWE Network exists. So the DVDs are like, why do I need them? And then on Netflix, you have like the documentary, uh, The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts, which I highly recommend you watch. If you have Netflix, it is on there now. Please check that out. It was a very good documentary, a little bit of fluff. But for the most part, it was good. And that's the kind of the, the thing about the WWE Network. It's like you're not going to get it to watch Total Divas, you know, live because they, they do delay it quite a bit. But it's an option to be able to watch everything kind of in one hub. And that's one of my favorite things. Like, I love the documentary specials. I absolutely do. And, you know, you have NXT on the WWE Network. So for just that, I think NXT has changed a little bit TV show wise. Um, it has lost a little bit of the magic that it used to, uh, but overall they're still putting on a pretty good show. And I read the spoilers going into NXT, the next event they're looking at triple and then triple H tweeted out a picture too. So it's not necessarily a full spoiler, but, uh, Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura competing, uh, no sleep till Brooklyn. So it'll be interesting to see if one of them qualifies to face Samoa Joe, or that leads to something between them. But NXT is definitely a standout for one of the reasons you should have the WWE Network. Now, here are some downfalls against that. There are shows that, you know, when you click on them, they either won't play or the video won't load or the ad's trying to load at times, which is a little bit frustrating. I'll be the first one to admit that. Uh, it's happened to me on numerous occasions. Uh, also, pay-per-view skipping. It is annoying, and it doesn't happen as much if you use it on, like, a console but I find a lot of the times I have to run two different pay-per-view streams uh, because one will play fine for a while and then it'll skip out while I can watch the other one. Um, or I'll sit a, a second stream and have it ready to go in case something happens. I think one pay-per-view I was watching on, on console and computer and it was so laggy and then I ended up putting on my tablet through my uh, adapter for HDMI and it played just fine and I went, why didn't I do this an hour and a half ago? So there's a little bit of frustration with stuff like that. And I know a lot of people were bummed out about account sharing. I still wish they would fix account sharing so that, you know, if you're in the same household or you're on the same IP, you could watch on more than one TV because maybe you're watching the pay-per-view and maybe in your family, you don't like to watch with your family. Or maybe you don't want to watch with your mom or dad or brother or anything. And you just want to watch by yourself. You know, it's nice to be able to have that without having to buy more than one account. Maybe WWE has an option with like family pricing for $14.99 where a couple extra people can watch. I think that's definitely something they should look towards doing. And I think it was something that would really benefit them uh, in terms of the WWE Network and can help families uh, be more accessible to it. Because expecting family members in the same household to spend $9.99 each on their own network subscription to me just it sounds ludicrous. Uh, even Netflix allows you to at least, at least view on two screens, just not at the same time. So I think they should make that clear that you can watch stuff, um, but in the same time, two on even the same internet would be uh, pretty glorious. So other stuff like Legends House, I would be excited for Legends House Season 2. Unfortunately, with the passing of uh, some of the old legends, it does kind of suck. Um, I do look forward to stuff like the uh, network for Network Live Specials, the podcasts are really good on the network, which you can watch the Stone Cold one. The Shane McMahon tell-all I thought was really good. And it just, it, in my opinion, guys, I 100% say the WWE Network is worth it, uh, especially when WWE's product itself, Raw and SmackDown, isn't good. At least you have the network where you can go back and watch some of your favorite stuff if you want to live in the past, or you can watch their new stuff like uh, Breaking Ground, the documentaries, the shows, the podcasts, Swerved, Camp WWE, 
And uh, Table for Three is really good. Ride Along is pretty good. There's a lot of stuff if you're a fan trying to crave your appetite uh, for stuff to watch. The WWE Network really does fill that, and it, it does a great job. Like I said, when I'm enjoying those shows more than I am the WWE Network uh, product itself or the WWE product itself, that's kind of saying something. So WWE, continue to do stuff right. Uh, I hope your subscriptions go up, man, because it definitely is worth it. Hopefully Brock Lesnar draws them out. Let me know in the comment section below, guys. Do you have the network? Have you had the network? Do you still have it? Let me know why in the comment section below. And until next time, it's your boy Tubby Emu, and we will see you all later.